are watching West Harper Community yeah. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Welcome to Art Talks. I'm Mike DeRosa. And I'm Joanne Bauer. Art Talks is a very interesting show. I think you're going to really like it over the next couple of months. We're going to be bringing in local artists and their work. And I'm really excited about this. And I think that you will have an opportunity to know what's really going on in the art world right here in the greater Hartford area. And I want to thank um, West Hartford Community TV for taking the initiative and allowing us to produce this show for uh, your edification. So without further ado, uh, Joanne, maybe you could introduce our two artists today on Art Talks. I'd love to introduce our guests. Today we have from the Connecticut Women Artists Organization, the president, Nancy Witcher, and she's brought along with her council member, Patricia Corbett. They're gonna talk a bit about the upcoming show in West Hartford. Hello, and the Connecticut Women Artists has been in existence since 1929. It was 1929 when at the Wadsworth Antheneum, and a gentleman who, who was the director of the museum, a Mr. Austin, decided that the women whose works were being exhibited at the time really needed an opportunity to branch out, and as, as did they. And so, the, initially, the group was incorporated in 1953 officially, and it was known as the Connecticut Society of Women Painters. Um, the name changed in 1973 to what is called today Connecticut Women Artists, with an organization of over 200 active members. Uh, we have an opportunity as elected members to show our works in the member show once a year and as well as to an open juried show um, the same year. Um, we choose uh, and select jurors from among the most talented uh, women artists currently in the field of the visual arts, whether um, they be from Connecticut or neighboring states. The artists, educators, and curators who have worked with us all um, have, are outstanding in their fields and have made important contributions to the art world. And so I am here today to um, let you know that the Connecticut Women Artists will be having a show of its members at the West Hartford Art League from June 1st to the 21st. And we are having our opening, it's a, like a reception, and all are invited. Yes. And it'll be <clears throat> on June the 9th from one five. To f from one to four. Oh, one to four. Oh, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we just would like everyone to come and, and uh, meet our artists and it's open to the public. And we will also be showing the works there from Thursday through Sunday, one to four, um, from the first to the 21st. Yes, that's, that's a good reminder because the right. West Hartford Art League galleries aren't open every single day, but right. Thursday right. through Sunday would be right. the opportunity for people to see, see right. the work. Right. Yeah. How many women do you expect to have exhibited in the show? We um, expect there will be approximately 70 
uh, to 100 pieces of work. And there may be um, 40 to 50 members exhibiting. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. And have you exhibited at the West Hartford Art League prior to this? Has the Connecticut Women Artists Organization exhibited no. there? As far as I know, this is the first time that we yes, I was have thinking that exhibited. Was the case. Our juror, by the way, is Vivian Zoe. And Vivian is the director of the Slater Memorial Museum in uh, Norwich. Yes, I actually am familiar with Vivian. She lived in Hartford for quite a number of years. Oh, she did? Yes, uh -huh. she did, yeah. yes. Well, we're, we're fortunate because although we don't have a home, a home base, we have the opportunity to exhibit in many different, very elegant and uh, status places like uh, Slater Museum. Uh, we go down to New Haven. To the S Slade Ely House. And um, it's wonderful, really. It's, it's a great opportunity. And I saw your show recently at Art Space in Hartford. Was yes. that in February or March? Yes, yes exactly. Art Space exactly. in Hartford. Yes. Um, and um, the other wonderful thing about, about the artists is that it's a very diversified group of artists. It's, now, I belong to another organization, too, which is Plain Air, which means you go out and you do a paint out. And you do a painting right out there in the open air, whether it's raining, snowing, or <laughs> I, I think Mike probably knows about that as an artist himself. Right. And uh, but the thing is, with Connecticut women artists, you have you have people who do three dimensional work. You have people who do uh, not I don't want to say ceramics, but uh, metal metal work, clay, uh, clay ceramics. ceramics, and clay work, and also who work Fiber. with uh, collages. Oh, definitely. Collages so, and texture. And, and a statuary. And, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, not statuary. Um, sculpture. Sculpture. <laughs> and so you get all these different women coming together uh, with all these different media, and it's really very exciting. Perhaps now or at the end of the show, if you'd like to say how a woman could get in touch with your organization or could yes. become right. a member, right. we can talk about that further. But, but at this point, I think since you've brought your work, we <laughs> should probably yeah, we'll really turn to your pieces it, exactly. and talk about some of the influences that uh, whoever would like to start, some of the influences on your particular art. Well, my, my uh, acrylic, uh, landscape is um, that's lovely, Nancy. Is, this is beautiful. Oh, thank you. It it is um, a shoreline um, painting. Um, it may look to you appear a little impressionistic. Um, my idea of abstract. of um, looking at at a uh, area that I'm going to paint is perhaps neo-impressionism, maybe that's a new word. Oh. Um, and oftentimes expressionists, um, depending upon the scene, um, maybe the technique I want to use or, or an emotion I want to emit about, about the place. Um, over down here on the, the bottom of, of the uh, scene, screen here is a um, monotype and so these might appear a little different uh, one being uh, in taken uh, done in Vermont rather mm -hmm. and um, this been done in Connecticut. Explain um, Nancy monotype. A monotype is, is a, a printmaking technique um, mm -hmm. uh, there is only one that looks like this. Thus mono. I'm not done mono. in a series. <laughs> um, I could be working on that one all day, um, but this is um, only one, the only one that So Nancy, is. this is actually a print, correct? Yes. So you, you first prepare a surface. I prepare a surface on a piece of plastic mm -hmm. okay. and then add the, um, paints or yes. inks yes and um, sometimes mono prints can uh, be ripped or torn and you can add those pieces to them it's a hmm. very loose um, 
and I find it really exciting media to work, be working in. I think it is too. I would like to come back to this piece for a moment. Was this piece done in plein air? Was it done out this of doors? Is, this was done in plein air. Wow. Um, I, wow. I work from That's sketches. Um, I also work right there on the spot. So yeah. this whole thing was done in, in hours at a time. I seldom go back to my studio and rework anything. What you see is the what time what you I get. Spent. Now, Nancy, <laughs> uh, you do both oils and acrylics. Maybe yes. you could talk a little bit about the difference between those two mediums for you. Well, for me, um, I, I prefer because my studio was a fairly small space with not a terrific amount of ventilation. So I prefer to use acrylics. Um, the top-notch acrylics these days are very similar to oil paints, um, and so uh, and they are. Uh, they, you can either have them dry very slowly oh, or quickly, depending upon your desires. How does how does that work actually? Well, sometimes you can add a medium to them, or you can also buy a paint. Um, that dries a little more quickly. A little more expensive, um, perhaps, mm -hmm. but it's workable. And in, in general, I would imagine if you're working out of doors that you would want it to dry more quickly yeah. so yeah. that you could transport it. But you will find, as, as uh, Patricia will perhaps will attest, um, that um, oil paints these days do dry fairly quickly. You know, you can do yes, something. They do. Yes. fairly quickly outside and have it dry yes. fairly easily. Are you working primarily in oils? Yes. Mm -hmm. And would you like to tell us a bit about the paintings that you brought to, today? Yes, yes. The, the one that I brought is the one up here on the right. And it is actually, I, I'm a, I absolutely love trees. I adore trees. And the first thing that I fell in love with was going back and forth on the Merritt Parkway because I had lived in New Jersey for years. And my husband and I were caught in a snowstorm one oh. night. And of course, he was all upset and angry. And, and I was said, look at this. This is heavenly. All the snow was falling down. And so I started taking pictures, went back to my studio and did several uh, paintings of the Merritt Parkway in different snow scenes and uh, different uh, now different times of the year I'm starting to do all the bridges which are masterpieces unto themselves and I found out they are <laughs> the John and I found out that it was they were all designed by the same man I did not know that do you, do they you were know his all name all done I can't remember it mm -hmm. offhand but he did all of them and they were all done to give work to people I see so I think, was it, the, was it before? I think it was... Uh, it was part of the WPA, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. But the designs are fabulous. And so this is not from the Merritt Parkway, but it is from Connecticut, and it's yes. one of the beautiful lush tree scenes. And you brought also one of your snow scenes, so one of your snow paintings along uh, I, today. It's just an image. Uh-huh, one of it's, the images, yes. yes. Uh, the images, right. and uh, so... <laughs> But so you also, you wanna... uh, during some of the paintings that you did about the Merritt Parkway, had a chance to look at them. You have them in different parts of the seasons. And also, yes. there's kind of an emotional structure oh, yes. that's inside of Oh, yes. Of it's a, as it's well. a, a phantasmagoria, <laughs> as I would say. Right, right. Yes. <laughs> and it, it's, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, so I uh, just, uh, I, I mean, they, they are beautiful. It's, yeah. They're absolutely just divine and and of course they're we're doing a lot of work now on the Merritt Parkway so you know I hope they don't change the beauty of that it's one of the most beautiful scene uh, parkways I've ever been on because maybe you could parkways, talk a, sorry, oh I, I'm sorry Mike uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about how singing relates uh, related yes. to painting how you got into painting relating one of the thing one of the critiques and I, I didn't put this in my statement about my work is that it's lyrical and it has all the, these flowing lyricism. And I thought, that's something I never tried to do. <laughs> but I'm sure it must have come from the music, because I studied and sang music internationally, opera-wise and Broadway and everything. In fact, I was going to bring you some CDs today 
but I'll, I'll bring, give them to you as a little gift for you at another time. But that's what did roll over into my art. And I, I did study as a, I mean, I didn't study. I was drawing as, as a child because everybody in my family are artists from my oh, mother. Oh, that's yes. fantastic. Yes, she that's was a seamstress, John. <laughs> and uh, she also at night would go and do paintings. Uh, and she studied and she worked in oils, but she also drew in front of us when we were little. So... Well, that's a direct influence. Yes, sure. but I went into singing, you know, and uh, I'm I'm happy I did. And our our teacher told you know got me there, um, and then later went back as I got older into art because singing, you gotta have the lungs for singing. <laughs> when I'm curious, when you are painting, do yes. you feel it as a lyrical experience? Does do you feel it as similar to singing or? Or that is not a conscious awareness. Actually, for you. I do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I never thought of it before. When I'm out there painting, I have to fall in love with the scene, mm -hmm. uh, and and it's, it is the same feeling. In in it is. It's a, it's a it's a feel. It's a yeah. It's a warm, <laughs> a warm uh, lyrical uh, feeling of connection. That's so um, it is, uh, and it's. Uh, you know, you, you get an idea from, you get, first you get the idea, wouldn't you say, Nancy? I would. You get I the would. idea. I, you get the idea just by walking around and looking. Um, there, seem, there seems to be a liquid quality to your work. Oh, you know, wow. it's, it, it kind of like flows on the canvas, and then it, uh, you know, obviously it stopped at a period some time. But is that kind of where you're? <laughs> that's very good because that as a high compliment for my singing. Thank you, because in singing, the highest compliment you can ever be paid is the legato. Yes. And legato is about line and flow and connection. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no problem, no problem. So if that's in well, my art, I'm doubly I'm, part of your creativity. I guess yes. yes. I, I th thank you. I think sometimes yes. folks wonder how to be creative. I'm wondering if either of you have Question. hints for the audience about how to how to foster your cre creativity. Okay, uh, I would say. Um, First of all, you have to have, you have to have a feel for it. You have to have the feeling. I don't know if that is something that's innate within us to have all of a sudden. Oh, I like to do that feeling from the very beginning. Say, so, you know, or some someone, some teacher, perhaps in the early. I remember in the second grade, the teach. I was drawing clouds. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget this. She said, "Oh, you do clouds good." <laughs> It was there a run, go. you know, and, <laughs> and I, I think, of course, Nancy was a teacher, an art teacher, mm -hmm. much of her life, and just imagine how many people you've influenced that way as well as with your art. Well, I, I think that perhaps uh, uh, my recommendation would be to, to the viewers would be to um, relax um, mm. and look. Mm. Uh, listen. Um, don't be afraid to make a mistake. Mm. Very important. Mm. Um, um, and do it enough so that you have found a, a comfortable media, whether it's clay sculpture or painting or, or uh, printmaking or yeah, what uh, have you. There's a whole range. Yes, isn't yes. There? yes, and I think you can be creative not only for the visual arts, um, but you can be a creative uh, uh, cake maker or, or sure. baker, exactly. uh, dressmaker, and I think those who <laughs> recognize costume designer, or just in your those... clothing, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> How you dress? <laughs> Throw a scarf <laughs> on, and there you are. <laughs> and I think those who recognize that are have a peace of mind, have a feeling of completion. Um, are able to easily relax. But you can't give up hope. Yes. You can't give up because there are times when you're going to do a piece of work and it's going to look like a piece of you know what, and you're going to say, you know, I got to quit. I mean, this is ridiculous. One of the, the, the greatest artists in Connecticut living right now, I didn't know him at the time. He walked by me at a plain air paint out and he walked by the friend he knew next to me, and he said, well, I'm going, I'm going to go home and rub, wipe this one out. 
And right. I said, who was that? And he said, oh, that's so and so and such and such. And I thought, well, if he's got to wipe his out, what am I worried about? <laughs> that's right. That's right. And I think in my experience, too, sometimes if I just shift gears, if I get up and take a walk, ride right, my bike, right. when yes. I come back, there's some new creativity that's happening. Absolutely. Right. That's, that's really important. Nancy, you talk about creating a new reality. Yes. Could you expound a little bit on that? Well, I think, I think that... In, in my work, for example, here, um, I'm asking the viewer to really look perhaps at the scene a little differently. Maybe, maybe it's not seen as a photograph, uh, but maybe I'm looking at the connection of one side of this spot next to the other side, or maybe I'm looking at the greens in the grasses and the trees. Um, I'm asking the viewer, like those people of Max Beckman and early Motherwell and William mm -hmm. de Kooning mm -hmm. and Picasso, um, I'm asking you to look at the scene a little differently than, than you would if you were taking, using your, your iPhone or your mm -hmm. camera. Definitely. It mm -hmm. seems to me that you have masses of color, that yeah. it's really a, a massive creative scene that I would feel that I'd have to push my way through yes. a bit. It feels mm -hmm. like an emotionally heavy day to me. Now, yes. I don't want to project onto what you were feeling, but that's what I'm reading yes. from the piece when I look at it. And certainly with art, it seems to me that there's something the artist is conveying, but then there's also what the viewer brings to it. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I wanted to do that with the snow scenes on the Merritt Parkway. <laughs> right. it, here, uh, Gil was just so upset. Here, we're stuck here. And I was saying, look at this. It's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so I painted that particular impression that's that I right. got. That and was it, my impression, and I thought it was infantile, actually, when I first finished it. This looks like a kid's painting, and I put it out there like this, and it won it awards. It has the exuberance it, of, of a child, doesn't it? And yes, it does. And actually, yeah. talk a little bit about winning awards. Sometimes that's great validation, right? Oh, yes. Sometimes the, the pieces that I am the, think are the, the, the least that I should present <laughs> are the ones that either sell or win an award. <laughs> so, <laughs> so whatever you do, don't give up hope. That's, do not that's... give up because you'll, you'll be amazed. Everybody is different and your style, your voice, <laughs> no pun intended, your voice is different than anyone else's. Mm -hmm. And that is the most... Um, important uh, thing that you can you can hold on to is your own voice in your art. I think too what you, what you said about transforming that moment in the car in the storm is something that that I really value especially in my poetry. I think it's mm. very easy not necessarily easy but very meaningful to transform moments of our lives through our artwork. And I don't know, Nancy, absolutely. if you found that to be... Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. Um, when, you, when you are... Um, when I was a high school art teacher in, in Meriden um, for many years, w one of the things that used to be very interesting to me is the number of students who, who were just trying to find their way versus those who were self-assured and they just knew. Um, and they were not afraid to try something new, um, to venture out on their own. Um, that's not terribly usual for high school students, mm -hmm. but those kids who felt comfortable enough to be um, showing and talking about it and doing it, especially doing it, um, one of the things about this uh, that Patricia and I have realized in being members of the Connecticut Women Artists is that sometimes there are folks who really um, are very disappointed, for example, when a juror says, well, not this time. <laughs> and, and one of the things that Patricia and I both have realized is that it's up to the juror. 
that they yes. can see all of these things put together. And very often they are looking for a look for the show. Mm. I, I won an award on one of my, <coughs> my trees from one of the farmland trusts in Connecticut. And I liked it because the sunlight came through and I thought, oh, I'll enter it. It won an award, money, you know, for the Nice, <laughs> nice. So I thought, oh, I'm going to enter this in another show. It'll win again. Well, it was declined. So <laughs> It's so interesting. I mean, there's no formula. There is no formula, and I'm sure yeah, that almost right. any artist can say that, those exact same words. <laughs> because right. it's, it, and that's what I think it is important for new artists to know, that it's very subjective. And as you very said, I've heard, I've heard jurors talk about how they look for the pieces to talk to yes. one another. Yes. yes. So perhaps yes. your piece could be stunning, but it's not talking to the other pieces yes. that are in that show. Yes. Right. Well, it looks like we're at the end of our time here. So again, I want to thank both of you for being here. You really are extraordinary people. And, oh, thank you. And you have given us a lot of insight into the work and you know the whole idea of art as a concept. And again, um, we are very happy that this is our first show. Uh, we do have something here that we want to share with you. Uh, and that's the 2013 Members Jurid uh, Show, and that's at the Connecticut Women Artists Incorporated, and July 1st to the 21st, 2013. So um, that will be at the West Hartford Art League. West Hartford Art right League, right here in West Hartford. Right, right. And there right is here a... in West Hartford at the Clubhouse Gallery with an opening on June 9th. And You're there's all a welcome. there is a website. If you yeah. want to get further information for the C C C Connecticut CWA. Women Artists, so they could go to Google, put the name in, and it would yes. come up. All right, yes. great. Well, listen. Thank you so much for being here. And again, uh, thank. I want to thank our audience. Uh, I'm Mike DeRosa and Joanne Bauer. And this is our talks. So please tune in next time, and we'll have some more artists here. We're going to have some interesting and tintillating uh, uh, conversation. And conversation means our talks.